Hi, and welcome back to the Public Gardens GIS video training series. This is lesson two. Today we're going to talk about how to download and install the ArcGIS Public Gardens data model, and we're also going to take a tour of the features that it has to offer. A few things you're going to need to know before we get started is that you're going to have a few system requirements on your computer to be able to perform all the tasks we're going to go through today. Uh, the first one of, that, of those is that we're going to need to have Windows XP or higher installed on your computer. You're going to need an ARC editor or ARC info license of ESRI's ArcGIS 9 or 10 software. And you'll also need read or write privileges on the folder where we're going to save all the data on your computer. First off, let me show you how to download the data model. Okay, let's get started by downloading the ArcGIS Public Gardens data model. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up a web browser. And once your web browser is open, type in www.apgg.org. And this will bring up the Alliance for Public Gardens GIS website. And if you scroll down to where it says ArcGIS Public Gardens Data Model, you can click on the download links. And it'll bring you to the page where we have a few files available for download. You're going to want to download the first file on here, which uh, says ArcGIS Public Garden Data Model. And when this uh, download box comes, comes up, you're going to want to save it. And we're going to want to save this to a new folder on your hard drive. Um, I prefer saving things to a folder uh, on the C drive. I have one called GIS. Uh, you can choose whatever one you want. Just keep in mind where you saved it, and we're going to come back to this location often. I'm going to create a brand new folder to store all of the work that we're going to work on today uh, in. And I'm just going to call it UC Davis Arboretum because that's where I work. You may want to call it uh, the name of your institution. Once you've got that new folder made, go inside of it. You should see the file name uh, as it was saved on the website and just go ahead and hit save. And once that is done, you can close your web browser and we're all done with that. Okay, the next step now that we have the data model downloaded is to install it into a new geodatabase. First step for that is going to be to open Arc Catalog. And if you don't know where Arc Catalog is, you can usually find it on your Start menu, under Programs, and under the ArcGIS folder. Once Arc Catalog is loaded, uh, we're going to want to create a new folder connection. Uh, that'll speed up the process of finding your files in the future. So if you go to the connect to folder icon and navigate to where you just saved that file, just select the folder that you saved it in. In my case, it's UC Davis Arboretum. In your case, it may be the name of your garden or whatever else you named it. Select that file, hit OK, and it'll kind of create a shortcut in the catalog tree at the left. Um, and you should see the file that we just downloaded show up. Next step is going to be to right click in the white space and hit new create a new personal geodatabase. Once you have that geodatabase created, we're going to rename it uh, to temp or anything else you want. But the idea here is that we're going to delete this geodatabase uh, in the future. So whatever you name it, it's not all that important. I would like temp because we'll know uh, that we can get rid of that in the future. Once you have it renamed, right click on it and select import and then XML workspace document. And then uh, from the resulting window, uh, we're going to select schema only. This means that we're going to basically just import a blank empty geodatabase schema as opposed to one with data in it. Hit the folder icon and then select the XML file that we just downloaded. If that file doesn't show up right away, you'll need to browse to the folder location where you uh, save the file. Select open. And then that should show up here in the box and then hit next. And what's going to happen is it's going to bring up a list of all the different uh, objects that are inside the data model. Uh, and we'll go on a little bit of a tour of these objects later. Uh, so for now, just hit Finish, and it'll start importing the schema. You'll see uh, a list of the different objects in the data model that it goes through as it imports them. And this import process can take anywhere from three to 10 minutes. So this might be a good time for you to uh, take a break go to the bathroom, check your email, get a drink, uh, whatever you need to do. And we'll be right back. 
Okay, once the import of the data model has completed, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is to uh, double click on the geodatabase to make sure that there's something inside of it. If you see what I'm seeing on the screen right here, then uh, everything worked and we can carry on to the next step. So go back up a level. Actually, what we're going to do now is uh, close our catalog and open ArcMap. So you can go ahead and close that. And then open ArcMap from either your start menu or if you have it like I do, I put the shortcuts on the taskbar here. ArcMap usually takes some time to load. Once it loads up, uh, just start with a new uh, blank map. OK. And we're going to want to add some data into this. So hit the Add Data button. And then from the pull down here, you should be able to see folder connections. And if uh, if we created the folder connection successfully in the previous step. You just click on that and you'll see that temporary geodatabase we created. Double click on that to open it. And then double click on where it says base map in the upper left. And then click on area of interest and hit add. And once that adds into ArcMap, you should get this unknown spatial reference box. That just means that we don't have a coordinate system assigned to this feature class yet, and that's what we're going to do in the next step here. So just it's, go ahead and hit OK. And then you should see uh, in the table of contents the area of interest layer is added to the map. And nothing will draw in your map screen. Now what we're going to do is open the distributed database toolbar. So right click either uh, on an empty space, or you can also get, I believe, customized toolbars will give you a list of the toolbars. Uh, scroll down to a distributed database and click OK and that will open up the toolbar for us. OK, once you have the distributed geodatabase toolbar open, you're going to want to hit the only button available to you at the end of the toolbar. It's the Extract Data button. So you click on that, it says where are you extracting data from, and that should be the temp geodatabase that we created in a previous step. What do you want to extract? It's going to be schema only. And then which geodatabase do you want to extract? You're going to want to click the geodatabase option. And then use the default path that's here. And that should be the folder that we've been working in uh, that you created in that previous step. And you're going to want to click the show advanced options uh, option at the bottom of the window and then hit next. And that will bring up the advanced extract data options window as soon as uh, our map can catch up. And then on this next window, it basically is going to list a similar list of uh, objects that are inside the data model, and we don't have to do anything on this screen, so go ahead and hit Next again. Now on the Output Spatial Reference screen, we're going to want to specify the spatial reference that we're going to want to use for our data model. So go ahead and hit the Specify a New Spatial, spatial Reference option, and then uh, for the data set name, the default option of base map is fine. And now you'll see it says unknown coordinate system, and this is where we're going to change the coordinate system to uh, match the data that we're going to use for uh, our garden. And now hit the edit button, and then hit select, and it, it's going to give you the option to browse for a coordinate system, and you're going to want to talk to uh, your local kind of GIS people to find out what the appropriate coordinate system for your area is. Most people use a state plane coordinate system, and there's a number of different ones uh, for your area. So I'm going to go to projected coordinate system, and then click on state plane. And we're going to use the NAD83 US feet datum. And I'm going to use California zone 2. Now, to find out which one to use, uh, I recommend talking to either your, uh, your city planning office, uh, or a county planning office, those people will be able to tell you what the appropriate uh, spatial reference is for you. And once you find that out, you want to select it and hit Add. And then go ahead and hit Apply and OK. And now you'll see that I have the appropriate spatial reference for my, uh, my locality selected. Go ahead and hit Next. And then on the Post Data Extraction option screen, hit uh, select No Further Action and hit Finish. And now it's going to go through a little process where it's basically going to create that new geodatabase and it's going to extract all the data model features into it, except this time it's going to assign the spatial reference we just selected to all of those feature classes. 
and hopefully if things go well this this part of it won't take quite as long as the the previous import that we did although you'll see it do uh, kind of a similar thing where it lists all of the feature classes that are inside the geodatabase okay once the uh, extract data uh, wizard is completed uh, we can go ahead and close ArcMap and we're going to return to our catalog so close ArcMap save changes to untitled select no and then open up our catalog again I always like our catalog maximized so I can see what's going on now once you get into our catalog it should open right back up to the folder we've been working in if not you can just click on that folder connection we created an earlier step to get there and you should see a new geodatabase in there called extract output and what we're going to do is rename this to something meaningful so right click on it select rename and this is going to be the geodatabase that I'm going to store all the data for my garden in so I'm just going to call it UC Davis Arboretum and again you can name this anything you like but it should be something meaningful and I also recommend putting the version number of the data model on there and this will make it easier for us to be able to track what version of it you're using in the future and if uh, you ever have any problems with it it'll be uh, a lot easier for whoever's helping you to, to figure out what's going on so put 0.19 because that's the version that you see on the end of this XML file oh and if you forget to type .mdb on the end it will give you this error message I'm gonna hit refresh and it will see that it kind of renamed it but it used .19 as the file extension so I have to rename this one more time put dot one nine then put another dot put mdb on there and now it does it correctly for us okay so we can double click on this and now we can see that all these feature classes have been imported into the data model or into the geo database excuse me if we right click on the base map feature data set here at the top and hit properties go to xy coordinate system tab we'll see that now all the feature classes inside that feature data set have the uh, spatial reference we selected assigned to it. And that will conclude this step. And next thing we'll do is go through and take a tour of the features inside the geodatabase.